Can use four scars. In the start, something like great man, a good, uh, I don't know, a football player. Okay, yeah. just name and Patrick, Patrick, and Alfred, good like it. Oh, how about Outer Lake? Outer Lake? Outer Lake. Close ish. Never mind. Okay, Patrick with this it's easy. Algorithm. <coughs> well, hello everyone. Here's some free posters if you want. Um, when you uh, come during the uh, presentation, please close the door uh, as quietly as possible. If you want to uh, evaluate decisions, you can visit this link. And please uh, tweet about write blog post posts about conference, of course. And uh, I should uh, promote a uh, grand finale at the end this uh, this uh, conference at uh, 16:30 at the uh, 105. And now, please welcome uh, Patrick with uh, Epsilon. Hi. Uh, this is what, yeah, I'm Patrick Outreich, uh software engineer at Red Hat and. I wanted to tell something quick about a project I've been working on with some of the people in this room, Simo and Rob mostly, um, for a Federation. So a very short introduction to what is Federation, because probably most of you have already seen a live instance of it. Um, if you have a lot of services running, for example, you're a big company, or like Fedora, you're a big project that has a lot of dif different services, um, but you don't want everyone to have to create an account for every one of them, um, that is where Federation comes in, because you uh, basically ask, you add a service in between which acts as a proxy between the account system and the services to authenticate the users. Who here has, is a Fedora contributor? Yeah, so if you ever used any of the Fedora services, you have used this uh, with the login system uh, that you use to log into basically every service we run in Fedora, which is based, by the way, running on Ypsilon. Um, so uh, normally with Federation, you visit a website which wants you to log in. It redirects you back to the authentication system where you enter your username and password. And after that, you drop back to the application, sign uh, verified by the, by the authentication service, and you are logged in to your account. Uh, 
Um, so, Ypsilon is an implementation for that which has a lot of different uh, protocols supported, like SAML2, OpenID Persona, which, by the way, is going to be aborted by Mozilla, but we'll see how we deal with that. And we are current. I have a patch for OpenID Connect, and I'm just waiting for a review from any of the other maintainers, which we would do during DevConf. Uh, so at the back end, it supports Fedora account system, which is what probably most of you know. Um, GSS API, so Kerberos authentication uh, for single sign-on enterprise environments. Uh, PAM, so you can actually just use any module you can use in um, Linux to log a user in. You can use it to uh, as an identity backend for Ypsilon uh, and just plain LDAP. And well, because we have LDAP and GS API, we also support IPA because that's just using both of those services. And we even have a very simple way of setting it up, and I'll try to show that later. So for information, it can get information for users from an LDAP directory or from a local SSD daemon. Um, and that's just to provide the information because, for example, PAM modules don't provide any information about the users. So you can use PAM to authenticate and then LDAP to actually get information about the user to provide to the uh, service providers. Let me. A few of the service providers that we've actually tested are uh, GitLab, OpenStack. Uh, basically, this list, we are very sure that, they, that those work. All of the others should work if they conform to the specification of the protocols that we are using. And I'm going to try to show at least some of them in a bit. So, as I said, we're currently working on OpenID Connect. Um, we're trying to add some more APIs because currently you can add a service provider programmatically, but we would also like to be able to modify them um, via an API so you can all automate it within, for example, config management tools. And we are currently busy on writing documentation and examples of how to set it up with various services. So I can tell you that it does all of this. Let me now try to show you that it does. Uh, let me see. But so let me. So one of the first ones that I actually test myself is Google Apps. So this is a Google Apps domain. Let's see if the network actually cooperates. Do I need to? It doesn't look like the network is up. Yeah. It's just all in all rooms. <laughs> Let's see if the... Sorry? DNS works. Chrome is the other one. Ah, I need to access... So, uh, this is uh, a production Ypsilon instance that I'm running for my family mostly. And let's see if I entered the password correctly. 
And there we go. So you have now seen that this works with Ypsilon. Let's try another example. Uh, another one is GitLab, which some of you might know. And because I had already logged in at the other one, it automatically recognized me and logged me into GitLab as well. Now let's try one of the more, uh, the example that I've been asked for a lot. Let's see if my VM's booted up. Okay, I guess not. Did the, did the VM's boot? The excitement stack is always broke. Yeah. Did I enter? I wonder if it even started everything. It seems to. Sh did I? Okay. Okay. So OpenStack, some of you might know this. Connect. Let's see. Since this is another instance, it did not automatically log me in because I wanted to at least have something in case all internet failed. And I don't care about certificates. And it did not work. <laughs> <sighs> Fuck. Well, that. We redirected you, knew you need authentication from somewhere else. You yeah. And then it didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the last example or demo that I wanted to give, and I hope that this one does work, is basically demonstrating off. Why doesn't it continue? Okay, so uh, I wanted to show how easy it is to set up Epsilon with just two single commands to set up both the server and the client in one go. Uh, this is a root at identity. Uh, I think I can. I actually got learned of that a week ago. Uh, these are also in my slides, but apparently that didn't work. Just these two commands are everything you need to set up a Ypsilon server and a client. So let me copy this into the server. So do you see an existing IPA? Uh, yeah, Sorry. that's the only thing I set up before is an IPA daemon, uh, which this, the identity server is a client of the, ser of the IPA server. Um, the other one is not. So do you set up, do you run an Ypsilon server install on the IPA server, or do you run it on an You can. Separate? You can do either. It, it, uh, the other one that I just showed you that should have worked with OpenStack was running on the same box as the IPA machine. Okay. So this installed Ypsilon. HTTPD restart. Work? Yes. So, oh, this entire Firefox session crashed. What did I do? Oh, right. Did I use, oh, that, this is the wrong box for this test. That's the wrong box. Yes, you can install on the IPA server. <laughs> yes, which is what I just did again. <laughs> and I think I just blow, blew away my OpenStack test. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, okay. So yes, you can install it on the IPA server. <laughs> okay. Uh, host name. Host name. Now Ypsilon server is running on the correct server. And then we have a, another server, SSH, uh, secret. I'm very imaginative with names, as you can see. Oh, yeah, copying across multiple lines isn't going to work. Sorry? What I'm currently installing is the client which is authenticating against Epsilon. Because what I just installed is the server, so the part that is uh, doing the user login and checking. And this is the command to set up a server that will authenticate against it. Sorry? Yeah. Not in the client, in the server we do. Did you restart the, uh, I did. Uh, and here I do use identity. Why is. Okay. I'm messing up my server names all over. Identity. <coughs> So because I just reinstalled it, I need to restart HTTP, which I didn't. So this should, what, okay. So this command should be the only thing you need to do. I probably messed up my server names and messed up my servers, my testing instances in the process. So um, sorry, is it in the path track, I think? I think so, yeah. That's what I said. I think I'm messing up my server names. Yeah. Admin password. Service HTTP restart. Sorry? Uh, that was a password of a, an administrator that can add service providers to Epsilon. Yeah. I haven't set up any other admins, so. So, if I index.html, my secret page, I'm very imaginative. So, secret, secret. I don't care about certificates. Yeah. So now it forwarded me to federation dot, and I can, I'm not sure if I set up a testing account here. Let's not try it. And here we go. My secret button. <laughs> so with just those two commands, you can set up an entire Epsilon server and client, which authenticate against it. And we actually, um, yeah, I have some, this, this is crashed, but basically that was my demos. Um, I think on my slides you will see the same two commands listed, but I can't go there right now. Are there any questions so far? Can you show the Epsilon user interface? Sure, uh, that's eight. 
evaluation slash IDP. Oh, right. Right. HTTPS. Because we only allow HTTPS. Um, so a normal user would not see. Oh, you can't probably. This is basically the main page of Ypsilon of a older version, the, the version that's currently in RHEL and CentOS 7. Um, you will have a administration button which is not visible for users, obviously, and a button to log out. And administration will give you a nice overview of which part, which plugins do and enable you to enable or disable specific plugins after installation if you so want to. And for example, for SAML, you can manage the list of service providers. And as you see, it automatically added the one that I just created here. Yeah. So in that situation, you are using it to authenticate a web service. Yeah. Can you use it to authenticate um, other services running on a Linux box? Like, does, it, does the client side integrate with Triple SD or PAM or something like that? Did I miss that on the slide? Yeah. So anything that can authenticate to SAML, which is usually websites. Yeah. There is usually. Some the OpenStack CLI should work with it, for example. Do you, do you have my DMOs? Um, not here because of the Wi Fi. Okay. Yesterday at my talk, at showing demos of this could integrate with the GNOME so that non online accounts get automatically tokens through Ipsum to Google Apps. Yeah, and I wish I could have shown that. So for more demos about Ypsilon, watch Alexander's talk. Or, yeah. um, and one other thing, if that, oh no, I just blow away my other one. <laughs> I was going to show something else on my other box, but I blow that away, so. Are there any other questions? If not, then thank you for. Oh, wait. This seems to be a. Sorry. How is it the comparison of Ypsilon and Eclock? Is it the same thing? Um, uh, the question was how it compares to Keycloak. Um, Yeah. <laughs> so these were the two projects that started at the same time from different sides with different goals. So Epsilon was started focusing on the administrator, on the DevOps, on the automation. So sort of an extension of the identity management data tracking system that we have in Tora, Corel, and SMTS. Epsilon was coming from
Yes. There's a lot of difference for at least for the time being. It's that Epsilon is able to pick up additional non fossil attributes from uh, SSD. So, for example, uh, email addresses, right? That right. Uh, he will cannot pick up. Right. So, this is missing there, but in the call, there is an effort to close the gap. There's also a new automation in Epsilon right now. This is something that Kiko currently cannot do as well. So. Any further questions? Um, so this version of the setup process uh, automatically uses a local SQLite database. If you pass on one extra argument, uh, dash dash db dash url, you can actually just give a database server url where it will then use those databases and then you can just put it on multiple servers, uh, put, configure them to use the same uh, databases and that should be it. So the only change would be to, to make it not use SQLite because that doesn't scale well. Uh, yeah, you can use either DNS round robin or uh, HA proxy, uh, which is actually what we have live in Fedora infrastructure. So you mentioned it's yes. used in Fedora infrastructure. Yeah. How many people uh, does it authenticate a day, or how many authentications would you do? Like, how well does it scale? I think a few thousand authentications a day. I, I, we have no exact numbers because we do not keep those logs because that's security, that's security sensitive information, but uh, quite a few. 
and it's been working there for about a year now, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, a year and a half because the switch got from August to September. Okay. Yeah, I don't know when we transitioned exactly. <laughs> any other? I'm not seeing any hands, so let's try it again. Thank you very much for... <laughs> This week, um, if you want to, I can get you my card and we can uh, get in touch with me. You're welcome. Uh, Patrick, I want to say hello. I'm Roman, Roman Juice. Um, I'm currently working with the Pico team ah. in Brisbane. Okay. Working with your team. So you, I remember you set up the last one. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I remember seeing your name somewhere. Yeah. So I, I thought I'd just say well, hello. Yeah, that's you. awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're working with the um, identity team? Uh, I'm just for Ipsilon. Uh, for the other things, I'm in for infrastructure. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's my main yeah. occupation. Day job. Day job. Because I remember you set up the, the Pico server. And... Yeah, I probably set up a lot for people. <laughs> uh, Sorry, I, I don't remember. Ah, uh, don't worry. Yeah. He's one of the three Fedora sysadmins, basically. So basically, he sets up most of the services. Yeah. Cool. Let me actually focus the bar. Thanks again. Sure. <laughs>
Yeah, okay. You want to uh, try to connect your computer? You want to say? Okay, fair enough. Thirteen. Thirteen. Uh -huh. All right. Yeah. It's been. Yeah. 